Welcome to Exometric number 746. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Exometric 740 to 752, click on the link directly below the video and scroll down to the Excel Magic Tricks section. Hey, this video uh, is a finance video. We have cash flows for a project, and we want to calculate what's called payback. Now, in my Excel Finance class, which I have posted at YouTube, I did lots of videos, um, but generally I don't stayed away from array formulas because uh, most of the people taking the class are new to Excel. But there's such a great formula for calculating payback. And it's a dynamic formula that whenever you change these formulas, it'll just calculate the payback period. Uh, and actually, I, I made a post at the Mr. Excel message board of a formula that was working for me. And uh, just to see what else was out there, and Barry Houdini came up with this great solution. Here's how you calculate payback. You just look. Here's all the cash flows year by year for the project. And at some point, you get, um, and this formula here is just a uh, cumulative running total formula. So I click there, colon, and then I lock this one. And what this does is it has a, keeps a running total. And so I'm starting at cash flow uh, times zero. Cash flow is all spending the money for the asset. And then these are recouping uh, year after year the, the, uh, all of the cash flows. Not accounting, but actual cash flows for the asset. So at this point right in here, somewhere between year three and four, we recoup our total cash. Now this doesn't payback rule does not take into consideration time value of money, net present value, IRR due, but still people use it. So here's how you calculate it. Uh, this is not dynamic. You just go, oh yeah. So it's three years. And then we're going to assume that the cash comes in the next year. We still have 187000 to collect. And it's going to come in in an even stream over the next year. So this is the cash flow. So we subtract, because this is a negative, that divided by this. right? And then it just tells you this is the proportion of the next year, through the next year where we collect the cash, 3.47. Now, on to this formula. Let's just notice, we have one, two, three columns. And whenever we find a value over here somewhere near 0, right? Not, not the past 0, but right before 0, we know we're going to take that 3. And then we also know we're going to add to it the amount from this particular year here divided by next year's. Now notice the, the setup of the column is we have this value, 1, 2, 3, 4. This plus, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, and then this one's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. Well, that'll help us understand uh, the next little formula here. Now, Barry Houdini said, hey, just use lookup. Lookup can do an approximate match, and it can handle arrays. Now, the value we're going to look up is 0, just like we kind of hinted at a moment ago. At some point, it's down. the dollar amount is up to 0, so we're going to look up 0, comma, within what? Well, this range right here. So far, that's no big deal. But the value to return is the tricky part. Now, lookup's great because you can give it the lookup value. There's the lookup value. This lookup, ve I'm sorry, lookup vector. This determines the position in this next result vector. So I'm going to type comma. Now, remember, the setup was uh, this column minus this divided by this. So I'm simply going to highlight this whole column minus, because we'll get a negative here, this column divided by, and now I need to offset it a little bit. I can't, I always want this divided by this, so I'm going to start this next array one cell below. That way, when it finds, because look up when it does an approximate match, this column is sorted in ascending order from smallest to biggest. And when it hits the first bigger number than 0, so that's the lookup value, it hits that and jumps back here. So what does it do? Now it's going to look up this huge array here, which is 3 <laughs> minus this divided by that, and simply enter. you got to be kidding me. Is that totally beautiful? Uh, and we could change this, right? We could type. Um, um, zeros here, right? Right, and so then it should be five and some little extra bit. And sure enough, that one updates. This one does not. Now I'm going to Control Z. There is one problem: if the project never pays back, um, and that would mean that the sum of these cash flows it, are still less than this. So I'm actually going to. Uh, why is that showing zero? 
I don't know what I just did there. Control Z. No, Control Y. Okay, so nevertheless, if these were all one, we get uh, NA there, and I don't want that, so I'm going to Control Z. I want to amend this. I want to add a, a little bit before this. So I'm going to say if the sum of all of these cash flows throughout the project is still less than, and this is a negative here, and I wanted a positive, so I'm going to put negative this. Then what do I want? Never, <laughs> which means it's never going to pay back. Comma, and then that lookup run if that's not true. So 3.47. Now, if these are all one, we get a never here. Control Z. If uh, let's see, one. So these will all be one, and this will be minus this. So we get it, don't get it all the way at the back, all the way at the end. So then it gives us the proper answer. So that we've tested. Um, all three situations and that amazing formula works just beautifully. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.